Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 199 of the J Situation podcast. I'm recording this on February 19th, 2024. How are all you wonderful folks doing today? Yeah, I hope you're doing well. Uh, I am doing well, uh, but very busy. And uh, this week actually is particularly busy. Uh, we are publishing the podcast early this week because I will be presenting at a research symposium later in the week. Yeah, and I, I simply can't be in two places at once. <laughs> so yeah, um, uh, every once in a while, I present research to groups that uh, are much like all of you, actually, uh, much like the supporters of Pew Science, except the difference is uh, those groups to which I present, they operate behind closed doors, and the research is proprietary to the group. Uh, it's it's something that folks have done for many decades, actually, uh, and it's actually part of the inspiration for what I do with Pew Science. Uh, the, the, the benefit of Pew Science is that a lot of the research is public, you know, so you, you get to see it, which is really nice, right? Um, and and uh, one of the goals I had when I started the effort um, was to do something like that, but, but for the public, which is seldom done. You you seldomly see it done for the public. So uh, here we are. Yeah, so, so far, so good, I think. Uh, so I, I hope that gives you a little glimpse into the background of the Pew Science Laboratory and the public-facing science or sound standard research effort and things like that. Just just a little tidbit for you if you if you were curious. Um, so yeah, early podcast this week, um, and with that, uh, some early data publications as well. Yeah, so today you'll get this episode, and you will also get two articles. That's right, the Otter Creek Labs Polonium 30 on two different host weapons. Yeah, 308 bolt action rifle and 556 Mark 18 SBR. Yeah. Yeah, so actually, you know, it's cool. These two articles along with the original 556 Polonium article from uh whenever it was, I think I want to say it was article 75 or something. It was it was way way back when. So these two articles plus that original Polonium article, they form a wonderful case study. And, uh, you know, so what we're going to have to do, we'll, we'll have to do a total summary article for all that later. But for now, uh, you, you're sure in luck, I think, having these three total articles now for the Polonium uh, system as a whole. And, and we'll get into that. Okay, so on today's episode, we'll hit listener questions, uh, which we haven't in a while. Um, and then we'll hit the intro uh, the introductory discussions for these two Polonium 30 articles. Uh, and then next week, uh, we'll go deep dive uh, into those two articles technically, uh, so, as is tradition. Okay, sound good? Okay, cool. Okay, so uh, now before we get into this, I'm going to give you a brief word about the sponsors that make this podcast happen. And so just, you know, I know there's a lot of new listeners to the podcast. If you're listening on YouTube, uh, if you in the show notes, if you don't want to listen to these ads, I'm, I'm I'm about to tell you about. You can just you can skip ahead and go to the topics directly. There's timestamps in the show notes there on YouTube. Uh, same thing on Spotify or iTunes or whatever. Wherever you listen to this podcast, uh, the show notes do contain timestamps for the topic, for for the topics rather. So you know. If you're not into listening um, to me tell you about these wonderful companies that help this podcast happen, and you just want to, you know, take money out of their mouth, no, <laughs> take food out of their baby's mouths. No, I'm just kidding. I'm being dramatic. No, but seriously, if you want to skip them, skip them. This uh, podcast is brought to you by Legion Athletics. Did you know that? You should, because um, nothing you do, exercise, sports, really anything is worth, worth doing without consistency. Yeah, you really, you got to do it all the time, man. If you want to be good at something, you got to practice it, okay? Legion Athletics is a company that can help you do that. They can help keep it sustainable for you, okay? Whether it's whey protein or pre-workout or post-workout, vitamins, minerals, uh, sleep supplements, immune system supplements. Do they have everything you need? Well, no. No one does. But they do have a lot, okay? Uh, visit legionathletics.com. There's a link in the show notes, code word PewScience. To save 20% off of your first order, which is can be quite a lot of money. Um, and if you keep using that code every time you purchase something from Legion, uh, you get double loyalty points, which ends up netting you a net 10% off everything going forward, uh, which is actually, again, pretty sizable if you're like me that you you know constantly buying supplements and things like that. Get strong. It's important. Save money. 
Legion Athletics. Um, <laughs> this podcast is also brought to you by Top Gun Range Houston. Um, they are a pretty decent sized range that's actually pretty high quality. So if you're in the Houston area or if you're just you know visiting on a business trip or whatever, you should go, go check them out. They have a 15-lane indoor shooting range. They have the largest firearm rental fleet in the whole state of Texas. So you can rent a lot of different stuff if you haven't shot it before, um, including pistols and rifles and shotguns and silencers and machine guns. And when you rent the silencers and you put them on the host weapons that they have there, and, and they actually have some that mirror the host weapons used in the silencer sound standard research pedigree, Pewscience.com. You can kind of get a feel for how the weapons and silencer systems are operating, which is pretty good. That's actually a really, really, really valuable resource for folks. You spend a little money, go hang out, shoot some guns and silencers, and that, that could be a good day for you. You know what I mean? Or your friends or your family. Okay. Uh, check out. You can check out their inventory at TopGunRange.com. Find them on Instagram at TopGunRange. All that good stuff. Okay. Um, podcast is also brought to you by High End Armament Technologies. That's Heat. Yeah, they're in Oklahoma. They're a dealer of exactly that, high-end arms and accessories. They have a significant longevity in the machine gun, NFA, uh, night vision, thermal optic game, uh, infrared sighting systems, crazy lasers, uh, really hard-to-find weapons from Knight's Armament and HK, just weird stuff that, you know, what, you need? Uh, you might need a certain type of grenade launcher or, you know, infrared laser? Yeah, call Robert and his crew at, at High End Arms. I can hook you up, okay? Highendarms.com, Instagram at High End Arms, and they have a Facebook page, which is, you guessed it, High End Arms. Okay, hope they can help you out. Um, this podcast is also brought to you by Silencer Shop, the largest uh, distributor of silencers in the world. Uh, you can use their kiosk. Uh, you can do your fingerprints and photos electronically. In turn, you cut down on errors. You simplify your silencer purchasing process. You get a money-back guarantee. It's pretty good. No transfer fees, no paperwork errors. Just you and your silencer with no drama. It truly is Sonser Ownership Simplified. And uh, thank you to Sonser Shop for making this podcast possible. And also, um, lastly and most importantly, uh, the primary sponsor of this podcast is the Pew Science Laboratory. Uh, I am the technical director of the lab and in the interest of public education. Uh, we sponsor this podcast uh, and um, we also run a public research effort. Uh, which continues to push the sensor industry forward one test at a time. And you can visit PewScience.com uh, for the suppression rating metric. Uh, it is the simplest and most accurate hearing safe ratings for your suppressed small arms. It's based on true human inner ear response of the entire gunshot from before the combustion takes place all the way until all the combustion is gone, all the mechanical noise has ceased, the entire weapon operation is complete in the free field in accordance with the mill standard. And uh, yeah, we, we named this very strict execution of mill standard testing the silencer sound standard never been done before okay so we put it in seven sections and uh it comprises the most in-depth and accurate silencer data analysis in the entire known universe it's all available to the public 24 7 at pewscience.com and you can support this podcast yourself you can support all of that research in pew science all the public testing by joining with a membership at our website at pewscience.com there's a there's a join button do it it's awesome it helps us keeps us going we'd be forever in your debt um and you know what if you don't like recurring stuff and you just want to like throw a bone every once in a while you can hit the donate button on the review page or the podcast page of the website that that helps a lot thank you so much every little bit helps um and you know what if you're not into spending money which eh, i get it dude uh something that's free does not cost you a dime it's just giving this podcast a good rating on your favorite podcast provider, giving a good review, like, and subscribe on YouTube, all that good stuff, spreading the word, letting folks know that this research is happening, letting folks know that it's grassroots and that uh, we're trying to um, spread the gospel of suppress small arms and um, normalize their use across the uh, across the United States and hopefully the world. I know a lot of you overseas are listening too, so stay safe. Um, so... Uh, like I mentioned in the introduction here, we've got three topics for you today. I think it's going to be action-packed. Topic one, listener questions are back. That's right. Listener questions. I love it. Uh, we're going to answer more of your queries from the sixth solicitation. Uh, we're back. We're going to do that. That's right. Uh, topic two, Sound Signature Review 6142, the Otter Creek Labs Polonium 30 on the standard 308 bolt action. Introductory discussion for that overboard polonium silencer. Very interesting. Um, 30 caliber. You can put it on 7.62. What, what a time to be alive. And then topic three, 
Uh, you guessed it. Uh, Sound Signature Review 6143, the same silencer, the Otter Creek Labs Polonium 30, again, this time on the standard 556 Mark 18 SBR. you got to ask yourself, how does Overbore influence the performance of this particular design? Is it good? Is it bad? I don't know. We'll see. We'll give you an introductory discussion today, and then uh, we'll go deep dive next week. Okay? Okay. All right. Let's move into topic one at a time of 10 minutes and 32 seconds we made it one second okay topic one listen to questions we're going to answer more of your more of your queries more of your inquiries from the sixth solicitation the sixth time we've done this it's wild you know it has been a minute um since we've uh, done the episode though uh i think i uh, yeah and i was looking back on this i think the last time we dove into answering these questions was back in episode 195 so that was it's, it's 199 today so eh, about four episodes ago it's a, give or take about a month ago was the last time we touched on these so we're definitely due um so we're going to get into them again um i did cheat a little bit and i looked at some of them ahead of time just to see i was got curious and there's some good ones in here okay so we're gonna let me open my. I have the spreadsheet where I've cataloged them. Let me. Okay, I've opened up the spreadsheet here, yeah. and each tab I got, I got like these. This, I was like round one through six. It's so crazy, dude. So last time, um, and again, for those of you new to this, if you would like to go back and listen to previous listener question episodes, you can click the listener question metadata tag under this current episode that's published on pewscience.com slash podcast, and that will take you a list of all the listener questions episode. If you can't find that tag and it's hard for you, it, there is a, if you go to pewscience.com slash podcast, there's a search box at the top of the page. It's a Google search appliance like for the domain. And if you type in listener questions, that search box and, and hit enter, it'll, you'll find it. That, it's really not that hard. <laughs> I, I, there are many ways for you to find it. I trust you can. <coughs> Excuse me. So last time we did this, which was like episode 195, right? Last time we did this, we left off on global question 433. This was uh, local question 19 of the sixth solicitation. And the question was, if one annulus is beneficial for suppression, would a second or third concentric annulus work even better? better <laughs> sir i just the, the, and the person who asked this question sir it was great to see you at shot show um you're a gentleman and a scholar and um yeah so i went on to answer that question talk about yeah actually more would be better but there's a few factors at play so if you would like to to go deep into the answer that i gave that last episode go ahead and and, and find that previous episode and you will hear the answer to that question okay okay so to, uh, on this episode, we're going to uh, start with uh, question 434, so question 20. Trying to be the predator, do you suggest weapon-mounted thermal or helmet-mounted night vision first? Thanks. Well, uh, you're, you're most welcome, sir. I'm glad you asked the question. Thank you for thank you for being here. No. Um, yeah, so let me repeat the question in here. This guy's trying to be the predator, so that means uh, seeing uh, multispectral and uh, also enacting uh, lethal force against uh, something living. Um, he's asking me if I suggest that he put uh, uses weapon-mounted thermal or some kind of helmet-mounted uh, night vision appliance or something. Eh. I uh, okay, so this is just my opinion. There's, I guess, there's no right or wrong, but this is. This and so don't get too mad at me, folks. But I'm going to answer. I'm going to give my opinion. My opinion is: what, go weapon mounted thermal first. Um. And I and I actually, me personally, I would take that a step further, and I would I would say go dedicated thermal scope for your rifle uh, rather than a clip on. If you're going to do any significant amount of hunting with a thermal, I think that's prudent. Um, th th there really is no substitute for uh, dedicated thermal scope for the field of view, the clarity, the features, the weight of the whole system, guys. It's, you know, you're not going to get better than that. Um, you know, there's just, it's proven time and time again. I think uh, all experienced night hunters are going to tell you that. I, um, th th there really is, is no substitute. But uh, I, having said that, Having a clip-on system in front of your day scope 
um, is of course super cool as well. Um, it's all about what your budget is, what your choice of system is, you know, for, for a first timer and for heavy night use, I say go dedicated. Um, then if you really want to use your, your day rifle at night, yeah, clip on fine. Now for your helmet though, honestly guys, and this is just coming from like having been there back in the day, like going bare minimum, I'd say helmets last step. Um, you'd be surprised how easy you can get around without a helmet mounted anything. And you can, you can get away without using helmet mounted solutions till the very end. I think, I think a lot of people are going helmet mounted because they, they think they're a special operation soldier person. And you're talking about being the predator and you're talking about hunting and these things are not shooting back at you. And if they are, you're, I am grossly misunderstanding your definition of predator, sir. <laughs> we might have to have, you might, you might, you might be using the vernacular wrong. <laughs> I'm talking about hunting things that are not shooting back at you. Um, so yeah, you can, you can, you can get around and especially, you know, a lot of night hunting, you're going to be stationary. So I wouldn't, I just wouldn't worry about that. You can use a red light to get around and, you know, you can spot with your rifle on a tripod or you can unclip your scope from your rifle on a QD. You you find you can do that. You can even, if you had a clip on, you can unclip your clip on to spot with spotting is what the, and that's the, and that's the thing you're asking about night vision, dude, right now, if you want to be the predator and you want to hunt, I, I forget about night vision first. The most important thing is thermal first. And then, and then, night vision after that. So like, I just want to let you know one thing about hunting at night, besides the thing on the rifle to aim and shoot and kill, you need to look around and find the things to kill and finding things to kill is not something you do with night vision. That's something you do with thermal guys. Okay. Uh, the, the, the amount of people that su successfully located objectives to neutralize with thermal versus night vision, it's, it's not even, it's not even the same sport. Okay, heat signatures are how you find things. You don't, what, you think you're going to see any, if you're trying to find something with night vision at night, you think it's going to be easier than looking at it during the day? It's already hard, it's already hard to see an animal during the day. What, now you think you can see them at night easier with with night vision? No, it's going to be even harder. Use thermal, don't handicap yourself, you have the technology. So, um, with regard to spotting before you're killing, uh, spotting with your weapon mounted system is can be cumbersome because it's like on the system and that can be heavy. But if you're on like a tripod, that's cool. Uh, the most efficient thing that I've ever used for this operation is a weapon mounted thermal with a handheld spotter. And if you really want to, you could go helmet mounted thermal, but that's really expensive. So the, 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 the bargain method, well, the bargain method is not using any of this and just using red light, but the bargain thermal method is dedicated rifle scope. That's thermal on a QD mount with a quick, quick release that returns to zero decently that you pop off the rifle to scout with. And then when you find something, you put it on the rifle, you get on your tripod and you go to work as, as the kids say. Okay. That's like the most cost effective way. That's good. And you're going to kill a lot of coyotes like that. I promise. Okay. You don't need, you definitely don't need dual tube night vision with like a clip on th uh, a voodoo and like, you don't need, you don't need that dude T to get started. Now, if you have the money, and you want to get crazy, well, please do so. I mean, it's awesome. But, you know, you don't have to spend 30 grand <laughs> yet. <laughs> okay? You you really don't have to. If you don't, you might live to fight another day. Okay? Hope that helps. Um, 
Global question 435. That, and again, that's just my opinion. There, there is no wrong answer there. Just that's what I, I mean, be practical. N not that any of that's practical. I mean, <laughs> thermal weapon sites aren't exactly practical things. <laughs> You're already in the deep end, but I'm saying like, if you want to like, actually like, you know, be able to send your kids to college, you maybe don't buy everything. Um, global question 435, sub question 21. After seeing the RC2 on 14.5 and how it's not what you'd expect, how do KCANs compare? Hmm, that's a good question. Thank you for asking that. Let me, let me rephrase that in a way that is more digestible for the general populace. Um, so after seeing the, the Surefire SOCOM 556 RC2 silencer's performance on the 14 and a half inch mid-length gas AR compared with its performance on the short, really short barrel Mark 18 and how like you might not expect the performance to scale or not scale like that. He's asking, well, like after seeing that scenario, well, how do K can, how do really short silencers do? Okay. And so, um, just to give some background on the question uh, this guy's asking, if you want to go and oh, let me do it because this is going to confuse people if they don't know. Let me go to the website real quick. Yeah. What's the fastest way to do this? You know what? The fastest way is probably at least the search box. I'm just going to go. I'm going to go to the public ranking section really quick because that's it's like really easy to do that. And that, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the silencer box and I'm going to scroll down to rc2 flash hider 556 i'm gonna hit only okay boom and then now my 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 table is filtered and i have two entries in the table and it says article 52 and article 128 so article 52 it was the mark 18 test of the rc2 the 556 rc2 and then article 128 was the 14 and a half inch m4 a1 test of the rc2 and the super, super duper high level conclusion here that's really interesting when you look at these two entries in the table is exactly what this gentleman is talking about. The overall composite suppression rating is the same for the, both the systems. The muzzle suppression rating is like really, really close. And the ear is better on the M4 because the blast is further away. But the fact that the muzzle suppression rating is almost the same for the RC2 on these two guns shows you that something's going on with the RC2. Okay. And so his question is, well, how do, if that happened with RC2, how, how do KCANs compare? And it's a really interesting question because you just have to stay tuned, guys, because keep in mind the RC2 is a special case. Okay, the RC2 is a special case. It was designed and tested for a short barrel and they make different, the, the, Surefire makes a different silencer for a longer barrel. And, you're going to you're going to see that testing and analysis from us you can stay tuned for that you you, you understand um, the blast chamber and the vent geometry of an RC2 is specialized and the performance consequences you saw when you went from mark 18 to the M4 like you, you basically saw it not improving it's because the RC2 does so well on the mark 18 it's not the other way around it's not that it's like oh the RC2 sucks on the M4. no 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 the RC2 just does really well on the mark 18 and it's a Mark 18 specialist due to its design. It's a, it is a special case. Do not conflate its performance, scaling, or lack thereof with other silencers. You can have a bad time. I've, I've said this again and again, actually. Okay, so please heed that warning. Okay, good question. Stay tuned for other silencers on that platform. We will. We, we do have more 14.5 test out. There's just other things right now. Um, question 436 sub question 22 do you think huxworks can combine the flow through tech with other tech to make a hybrid design thank you for the question uh absolutely they can uh, yeah uh, i mean it's it's, it's 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 actually exceptionally easy to do that like like conceptually Right, I mean, I, you know, what, what they, they got the, the, their flow through system. Has, it, they have a, what? What they got? They got a, they got like a. Let's call it a, a disruptive spiral baffle core, yeah, for lack of a better term. And then what do they do? They surround that by an annular spiral spiral array that, that travels forward and aft. You've seen that. You know how it works. It's like a super long distance in which to expand gas, cool it, and uh, facil facilitate heat transfer and additional turbulence. Okay. Okay, so 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 to merge all that to a hybrid design, what do you do? Well, you 
you just like you increase the main flow restriction with, with more turbulence and uh, you divide your flow proportion accordingly. And what do you do? You ramp up the back pressure. Done. Okay. You just tune it. You just tune the design of the silencer. I mean, that's, I mean, you, you, you can, and, and, and I don't mean to be um, dismissive of your question, sir. I'm, I'm not trying to say, oh, that's a dumb question. You just do this. I'm not, I'm not trying to do that to you. I'm not, I'm not trying to be like that, but I do want you to know that this can be done with any silencer design. You just need to know what you're doing and what the consequences are of doing it. It's, uh, look, hey, here's a, here's a real life example, uh, very topical to your question. Look at the pistol silencer they sell. That uh, what's it called? The Cash Nine, Cash Nine K, whatever. It's a primitive hybrid design, isn't it? Look at it. You can take it apart and look at it. What do they do? They put annular space around a simple conventional baffle. Oh no, <laughs> that's literally an answer to your question, and it exists right now. Look at it. That's li- th- that's like, and that's not even that's not even the complicated way that I talked about. This is like basically take th- th- that is a hybrid design, and that's literally. It's literally, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. That's literally conventional pistol baffles with, with a with a, 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 a an annular space. This it doesn't even go back on itself like their flow through. <laughs> it's like even more simple. Okay, so you already, you already had that example. Isn't that cool? It's cool. Okay, right. thank you for the question. Hope that help. I hope that helps. I hope that's like pretty straightforward. It's pretty straightforward. Um, You'll see, and you know what? As you as you become more familiar with sensor designs, you look inside them, Google them. You get cutaways of sensor. As you become more familiar, you'll you'll understand. I think. I think. It'll become more clear. Yeah. So, okay. Um, question four hundred and thirty-seven. Sub question twenty-three. How much does thermal transfer affect suppression? Thermal. Tra- yeah, heat transfer. So, okay, uh, good good question. Thank you for the question. Let me rephrase that. How much does heat transfer affect suppression? Uh, the answer to that, sir, is significantly. How much? Uh, significantly. A lot. A lot, a lot. Uh, it is of significant importance. Um, however, um, I, I'm going to caveat this with a big old caveat. Um, however... It is also important to understand which heat transfer you're speaking about. That's right. Yeah. One of the most important aspects of uh, suppressing a gunshot is letting the gases expand and uh, letting them cool. It's very important. Now, uh, 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 another important step is being able to to transfer heat from the gases so that they can can cool. (laughs) Um, You know, these two different mechanisms actually happen in different ways, as you can imagine. One of the ways... Um, you know, one of the ways you can really help heat transfer occur more quickly is through turbulence. I I know I just I know I've talked about this recently on a podcast. Uh, you know, in in the past few episodes, I've I've mentioned this. Now, when you uh, increase turbulence, you make the heat transfer happen more efficiently. That's just uh, that's how the universe works. <laughs> it is though. Um, in a conventional and a very simple sensor design, uh, you'll you get heat transfer. Uh, into the baffle walls and then the outer tube. Um, that's for sure. You know that it gets hot. You touch it. Ow! In more complicated designs, um, you're going to get that heat transfer more efficiently because there's more turbulence, more surface area. You may see actually that the silencer gets hot uh, very quickly sometimes. Yeah, that is actually a sign that the silencer is working very efficiently. Just so you know that. Uh, you know, silencer's job is to get hot. If a silencer stayed cool, really, really cool all the time, you'd be like, you'd like wonder what was going on. It's like, what's happening? Um, you know, it's actually one of the ways you know it's working that it's getting so hot. Now, I'm not, now look, let's not get, I don't want someone to twist these words. I am not saying a silencer has to get hot quickly to work. Do not twist my words, I swear. I know someone's going to, just don't. That's not what I'm saying. Don't get it twisted. I just want you to know that heat transfer is normal and expected. Okay. Okay. Cool. Now, direct to your question, though, sir. You're saying, well, you know, how much does it, how much does it affect suppression? Well, it can significantly influence it, and the degree to which it does will depend on the design because some designs depend on heat transfer in certain ways more than others do. Uh, there's actually, you know what, and I, I told you I cheated and looked at some of these beforehand. There is actually another question in a second we're going to get to. Um, which I think is going to help you understand a little more about this. Um, so I'm going to, so hold your brain, hold your thought, and then I'm going to 
we're gonna get to this in a couple of questions. Okay, okay. Thank you for the. It's good. So keep that in mind. Okay, like, ha- everyone listening. Uh, in your mind, you're like, oh my god, oh my god. How, how does um, heat transfer uh, affect uh, performance of a silencer? Ah, uh, okay. Not resolved yet. Still, maybe it should be resolved, but maybe it's not. Okay, we'll talk about it. now. Next question. Four hundred, uh, and we'll get to it in a second. Four hundred thirty-eight. Look at question twenty-four. Any plans to acquire an IR gas imaging camera? to show gas blowback of different suppressors. Thanks for that question. It's an interesting question. Let me rephrase that. Any plans to acquire a thermal camera to to show blowback? Um, You know, we have infrared infrared cameras. That's fine. Um, Yeah, and and we'll eventually... uh, We'll do stuff like that, I guess. You just need to be very patient. You know, it's important to understand what you're asking about here because a lot of the information you're seeking sir or ma'am is actually available in the existing data that we present and uh with with, with regard to relative performance you know pr- pressure signatures tell a lot of the story you know um they do and uh, anyway actually members see that in every review the shooter zero so you know when you when you examine gas momentum you you get a lot of info and you'll see some of that this week actually in the articles those polonium 30 articles you're gonna see it I'm, not, I'm telling you, man. Yeah, I can. There's a lot of in, other indications. I mean, yeah, we could go and oh, here's an IR. What's that going to tell you, though? I'm not sure. I'm not sure that's the right in- instrument for the test you're wanting to do. But, but thank you for the question, nonetheless. Um, question 439. So question 25, and this is the one where it's going to piggyback on that guy's uh, heat transfer question. Okay. Uh, sub question 25 in a design like the PTR vent 2 would it potentially lose effectiveness as it heats up oh now you see why it, the question went with the other question and I, this is a different guy two questions apart that's that shows you like how high level you guys are you're asking like Pretty cool thermodynamics questions, honestly. Um, let me let me repeat the question. Um, in the design, um, in a design like the PTR Vent Two, that's that uh, metal lattice structure, uh, purposely induced porosity, uh, pistol, uh, uh, pistol caliber silencer put on MP5, really quiet. In that silencer, would it lose effectiveness as it heats up? Now, the answer to your question is potentially yes. I will tell you, all silencers do. Every single silencer that you have ever shot in your life loses some effectiveness as it heats up. Every single one. Um, we have actually quantified this in our internal research for some designs. Uh, and and this is important to understand. We're tracking full-time regime. We, we've re- researched this for many years. It's actually one of the first things we prove to ourselves because it's so easy to see it in the data. When you look at all the data instead of, you know, if you're if you're sitting here looking at the single peak thing and all these other like simplified metrics people are doing and like you think that that's going to, that's not, no, 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 no. There's a reason we do what we do and it's so we could answer questions like this definitively <laughs> and tell you, yes, when the science gets hotter, it works less better <laughs> okay uh, 100% and, and we know that because the suppression rating changes okay we, we can and the and the gas momentum completely changes we can we can measure it and see it and we do and um and through the whole time regime now another thing to know here is that there are several mechanisms at play in the vent series from PTR to, and this this is actually piggybacking on a different question, right? This is a hybrid design, and you're letting com- you're, what are you doing? You're letting combustion gases expand per typical. What does that do? Let's them cool. Awesome. What else are you doing? Well, you're creating turbulence with those traditional baffles. Okay, awesome. You're going to wrap up some heat transfer. Very good. Very good. What what else are you doing? Well, you're forcing expanding gases through the lattice structure. Okay. Well, all, there are, all of these physical steps are inducing heat transfer. And as you heat that entire system globally, yes, gross heat transfer is going to become less efficient. Absolutely. Now, whether or not it happens more than with other silencers, eh, that's something we we would need to study in a controlled fashion. You can't just say, oh, yeah, it's worse with that. Huh? No. No, no, no. You, we would have to really understand. We would have to do some controlled, controlled studies. Um, 
Here, here's an example of actually a controlled study that we've done internally that we have not shared with anybody. Like we haven't shared the numbers with anybody. This is just our our internal research funded by us. Um, Huxworks stuff. Huxworks flow through stuff. The the effectiveness drops pretty quickly. Um, it's interestingly enough. Um, like when you like we've done controlled tests where we've we've tested and retested and tested and retested silencer without letting it cool at all and 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 completely predicted drop of performance in in a way that's like actually chartable and and that it just so happens that the Huxworks stuff that 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 flow series stuff is super temperature sensitive because of the way it works and you'll notice those sensors get super hot but, but it's it's not only that they get super hot it's the way that silencer works um which is interesting the vent stuff it, it, this is actually a really good question i, I want it i i cuz i don't know like how to quantify it for you yet without like doing more testing like that but i, I will tell you it's going to depend on the combustion regime and my guess this is just a guess my guess is it doesn't lose effectiveness as fast as the flow through this is a good question though I just want you to remember all silencers lose effectiveness as they heat up. Um, whether or not it matters for your use case, that's a completely other uh, um, other story. And, uh, you know, firing schedule is super important too and yada yada. And there, we could talk about that like 100, 100 years. Okay, I hope that helps. Okay, let's go on here. Question 440. Uh, Sub-question 26. Uh, research... Special series of l late on can. Oh my god, did I transcribe this incorrectly? Re <laughs> Research special series of late on cans on alternative hosts. I must have transcribed this incorrectly. Okay, this guy's asking like take a Glock, a BNT, a PC9, a Ruger Mark IV, 11 and a half inch mid. Oh, he means a lot. I, I, I must have transcribed it incorrectly. This guy's saying, um, are you guys going to have a, a special research series on a lot of different cans on different hosts to understand, like, um, uh, I think, host-driven behavior and to understand, like, the most efficient system for a silencer and, you know, compare them, et cetera, et cetera. Um, okay, I'm sorry I butchered that, but good question, sir. I know exactly what you're asking. That type of specialized research is on the back burner right now. But yes, optimum host testing is something we need to do. I think it's it's a project for when Pew Science expands some more. It's going to come. I just I can't grow. I, growing slowly is conservative, but it's something that I think is prudent in this industry if we want to uh, be here for a long time. So, um, just my nature. I'm rel relatively conservative like that. So. Uh, just from my observations, I, I think I don't want to do it wrong, you know, so, but yes, uh, that, that is a good question. And I think that those type of studies are important and it, you know, you got a glimpse into that type of thing when we did the, 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 the DSX surge, uh, test for maximum defense compared with the Mark 18, right? That was like a, that was, that was a host study in a way. We, what was the only variable? The only variable was a, a gas port size big deal it's a big deal right so that that type of work like when you like oh take a silencer and put it on a glock and a sig or you know take a silencer put it on an 11 and a half inch carbine length gas and oh 11 and a half inch mid length gas tuned what's the difference yeah those are good those are good case studies okay but it also distracts from our primary mission in some ways i know you want everything i do too great question question 441 sub question 27 is the it is 100 the maximum score the suppression rating will allow, like a vacuum or something? That's a good question. Actually, that's a great question. What a great way to ask that. Thank you, sir. Um, I'm glad you asked that because it's it's very topical, actually, given the, the data we've published recently, right? Um, you know, you, you get you get lugged into a lulled into a false sense of security when we keep publishing centerfire rifle data. Yeah, you, you start to forget there are things that are actually quiet, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, yeah, you know, to your question, um, 
Uh, let, let me repeat. Is 100 the maximum score the suppression rating will allow, like a vacuum? It's like, no. Oh. I'm going to say it like this. Uh, 100 is the maximum rating on the scale, okay? This is not what physics will allow. That's not a physics-based limit. Um, the, the scale is not designed like that. The scale is designed for a practical range for practical use with suppressed small arms. It's, it's a purposely engineered scale for that and that alone. Um, and, and, and I will, I'll, I will say, I'll give a caveat that we can plot other things on the scale, like a nail gun and things like that. And, but when you do that, that's just, that's simply going to plot on the scale and fit with the other transients with the other transients we've mapped. Okay. So, but your question is a good one because what you're, what you're asking, let, let me rephrase your question. You're asking, is a 100 suppression rating the quietest, the quietest something can be? Like the quietest sound? And no, it is not. It is not, actually. You can have things that are quieter than 100. Uh, so the suppression rating would then theoretically be above 100. But those things won't be practical small arms that exist, most likely. So it doesn't have a meaning in this context, okay? And, and, and I mean, it's a really good question because, you know, you, when you come up with a DRC, uh, exp when you come up with the, with the expression of a DRC for public use, like worldwide, you have to make this decision early on. Right. And if you got like 10 people in the room, you'd never get a decision because everyone would argue. So you, know, you can't govern by committee. Um, so your question actually, sir your question is similar to the reference level of a, of the decibel, isn't it? When you really think about it, like for example, we operate with a reference level of 20 micropascals, correct? And when I say we, like the world, we, like the collective we, we operate with a reference level of 20 micropascals. That's the quietest sound a, hu a healthy human ear can discern, right? Like that's in the sound for sound standard. That's on the internet. You can Google that. That's the logarithmic reference for the base 10 decibel scale. Tracking? Th that, is, that is what we use. When you say the word decibel, th that's what you mean. That the reference level of that logarithm is 20 micropascals. I know you. some of you don't know what that means, but you haven't, if you haven't read the, the Sounds or Sound Standard, then, then go read it again because it's, it's on the damn website. <laughs> okay? Okay? The suppression rating is not based on that. The suppression rating is uh, the suppression rating scale is not based on the the the, the decibel scale. No, it's 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 based on uh, uh, hearing damage risk potential. Ah, you see the difference. That's why it doesn't work like you, like you're saying. Okay, hope that helps. Okay, it is not a uh, peak dB. It is in fact a continuum of uh, human anatomical response. One second. Okay. Global question 442, local question 28. Thoughts on how CAT, PTR, and a few others are putting out new technology because rising tides. Because rising. Oh, so so you're asking, okay. He, okay, I, I get it. So this this that's a good question. Thank you. Um, th this later gentleman is is asking for my thoughts on on the fact that companies like CAD and PTR and others are they're putting out new technology, and that is actually raising the bar. You know, he's he's using that thing that I, I I've I've said a couple times: uh, a rising tide raises all raises all ships. Like that was a famous quote from somebody, and I I love that saying i just think it's so cool and i think that's true in a lot of different things and so he asked me for my thoughts on this i'll give you my thoughts i think it's awesome um i think we're seeing awesome technology i'm totally here for it uh I, i'm excited for consumers um i, I don't i don't want to like repeat myself here but guys like i mean i'm i'm super excited i'm super excited for consumers i'm, I'm excited for the state of the industry uh, I'm excited. I'm excited for Pew Science. Uh, I'm I'm excited for the state of practice of what we are doing here at this laboratory. Um, I, I'm excited for the state of the research. Uh, you know, you yeah yeah. You said you said this in your question, sir. Rising tides. You know, I, 
again, I've used that I've used that phrase in this context. A rising tide raises all ships. I believe that to be true in everything. It's certainly true in science or technology. Uh, it's true in consumer understanding in education. Uh, it's true in this entire state of practice. Um, you know, companies like the ones you mentioned, they're they're certainly raising the bar of what can be expected in performance and operational envelopes. Uh, you know, like you know, for example, like like performance for the size, for the weight, for the length, stuff like that. They're, they're raising the bar there. Um, I think, you know, I think you asking this question, and other folks listening to the podcast, I think they're raising the bar with regard to how consumers are knowledgeable and, you know, kind of you know showing up. You know what? You know, maybe raising the bar of expectations of what, of you know what today's knowledgeable consumers and sponsor users are capable of. I think that's that's probably something I. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think I think I'll say that. I think that I think Pew Science is raising the bar of what can and should be expected of performance data and 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 performance analysis. I think I think you've seen that. I think I think I think you've seen people kick and scream. But at the end of the day, we've set a standard for research and education that means there's no going back to the way it was before now. Right, you can't go backward. I mean, now people have seen what's possible. You got this, we open this Pandora's box. You, if you don't have an analysis of how a sponsor is performing relative to other ones on the market with objective metrics and physics explanations, you, you don't have anything now. That's it. People are expecting this, and all of you did this. I mean, you, all of you were, were receptive to learning. and you welcomed it, and we did it together. We did all this with all of your help. So we, we bootstrapped it. We bootstrapped science or industry education together. So those are some of my thoughts, sir, on 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 new technology. And I'm, I'm, this whole thing is, all, you know, as far as I'm concerned, this is all interconnected. Really, the only reason folks even understand the gravity of the performance differentials and the performance envelopes you're seeing from those companies you mentioned, like CAT and PTR, is because Pew Science did this, frankly. Without Pew Science doing this with your help, you, we, we would still be in the peak DB ages, and, and you wouldn't be able to tell anything apart. And all sponsors would be the same until you bought them, you know, brought them home and you shot them, and then you figured out your long wait was from nothing but a lie. That's what I think. Because that's the road we were on. You know, so you ask my thoughts. Those are my thoughts, dude. Like, I know, is that controversial? Probably. Is it true? Absolutely, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> That's absolutely true. I mean, those are my thoughts about how, how new technology is helping, but also how new technology is even able to be understood to be helping. How would you even know? At the end of the day, ask yourself, how would you even know without the effort you helped build? You wouldn't know. That's the answer. How would you even know? How would you even know the performance differentials if you couldn't quantify them? You wouldn't. We would be chasing our tails for another decade. Not on my watch, dude. You guys are helping us. We're we're we put an end to all that nonsense. Isn't that great? Sorry, I got a little aggressive there and passionate, but it is it is uh, important. Okay, all right. That's the last question for today. I'm gonna highlight that row. <laughs> He's crazy. He's unhinged. Um, okay, I'm gonna highlight that row. Question 442, sub question 28. We'll 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 kick off next time or next listener questions episode. We'll 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 dive back in. Okay, that was fun. I'm gonna save that spreadsheet and I'm gonna close it. <laughs> I'm gonna get some water. One second. Okay, that I had fun. We're having fun. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we're gonna move into topic two at a time of 49 minutes and five seconds. Okay, topic two. We made it. Um, Sound Signature Review 6142. The Autocree Labs Polonium 30 on the standard 308 bolt action. Introductory discussion to this interesting article in the pedigree. Um, You know, it's funny. I'm going to publish this. I I haven't published it yet when I'm recording this, but I will publish it. So, like, I, I just kind of pulled it up. The unpublished thing, just kind of looking at it, just like, um, you know, boy, howdy, huh? I tell you what, dude, I tell you what, I 
Look, I just want I just want to say something right now. Oh, yeah, I'm 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 probably going to get in trouble. It's okay. I maybe not get in trouble, but I I'm 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 definitely going to ruffle feathers and and I I I don't know if it's like the lack of sleep or what, but uh I I I've, I've like started to care much less about this um about like you know, feelings and everything. I, I just want to say something right now. And I think this might catch some of you off guard. Uh, and I know for a fact, a certain group is going to be very caught, very off guard with this or by this. Now, and then, now if you don't know this already, today is going to be the day you really understand why Pew science has continued for so long and what this is all about at its core. All right. Now I'm extremely excited to say the articles we are publishing today are an excellent case study in parametric performance differentials for silencers in the state of practice. So if you haven't been paying attention or you are one of those wild, crazy internet hater people that are, that that are parroting what, what the silencer manufacturers are telling you about all this, which we've heard it, uh, we've heard it all a hundred times. It's, it's, it's wrong and all dumb, but you keep saying, if you're one of those people, (laughs) I urge you to at least pay attention to these articles because for free, that's right. For absolutely zero cost to you, other than I guess the cost of an internet connection, which uh, you can go get a good, you know Obama phone, or I don't even know what that's a thing. It might be <laughs> for absolutely zero cost to you. You can literally see what happens to a silencer design when you change one thing. That's right. Take an Otter Creek Labs Polonium, make the center hole bigger. Done. Oh my God, the sky's falling. Oh, that alone should be worth its weight in gold to so many people out there in absolute gold. Am I right? Right? This should quash like every single argument you have against peace science right now. If, 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 if you're really exercising critical thinking, shouldn't it? This is one of the most controlled series of combustion physics experiments ever published on earth. And it's totally free for you. Ah, that's right. That's right. So that, my friends, is why I'm so excited about this topic. And and the next topic, frankly. This is actually this is a great this is a monumental day for Pew Science. <laughs> I don't I don't think you understand the gravity of this. Like these two articles we're publishing. This, this is the real big picture benefit here. Okay? That is like for me, like notice I haven't mentioned one company. This is like this is for the state of practice. This is a big real it's a real big picture benefit. Now now that I've said that, and that's out of the way, and that's all controversial, and get super mad, and get to like cry and everything like that. You get a lot of cry a lot. You know that's fine. You know, crying is important. Got to let those emotions out sometimes. I get it. Now that I've told you about that, let's talk about some of the other important benefits. Okay, there are more. Uh, for example, uh, I don't know. Otter Creek Labs gets to show you the performance of a sensor they worked on and developed for folks. Oh, that's important. That's right. Big shout out to Otter Creek, longtime Pew Science client doing practical products that are performing well. They're doing good things. Always trusting Pew Science to, per- to characterize the performance of their stuff, which is, in my opinion, a really big deal. It should be a really big deal in your opinion, too. It's a huge deal to a lot of people in today's market. We see that. That's real. Cool. And big honor for us. Huge honor for us to be trusted to do that. It's crazy. Yeah, huge deal. So, okay, that's another awesome thing. What else? What else is good about this? Well, consumers are getting uh, hot and fresh data. You love that. And in 6142, this first article, what are you going to see? Polonium 30 on a 308 bolt gun. Okay, cool. And you guys got to keep in mind, and this is in the article, this thing is a full size 556 silencer when it's a normal polonium, right? That's all it is. It's actually a pretty simple silencer. Okay, cool. You all know how it performs. Everyone knows. Been there, got the t shirt. Cool. Okay, make the hole bigger. Make it 30 caliber. Now what? Oh, snap. Now it's a mid-size to compact 30 cal can. Oh, my God. It's just changed. You made the hole bigger. Now all of a sudden it changed categories. <gasps> oh, my God. I know. I know. I know. So much drama. Oh, mystery tubes are so scary. Um, yeah. Well, now it's going to trade punches with some other things in the form factor. Uh-oh. So now you, what? You, you, you flip the script a little bit here. Uh-oh. Yeah. They just increased the utility of the polonium form factor. Hmm, interesting. It is. Now, you look at this. Um, is this thing a world beater on on this hunting rifle, this 20-inch bolt action that you shoot deer with in the face? Not in the face, in the heart. Is this thing a world beater? No. 
guys. No, it's not some ma magic physics fantasy dragon. Okay, it, it's a polonium with a bigger hole in the middle. Relax. Okay, this isn't like NASA did not like uh, re unveil this like uh, secret DARPA project uh, collaboration. No, it's a freaking polonium with a bigger hole. Relax. But it is it punching up with some more, you know, prolific, maybe some more expensive stuff. If if you're looking at that type of thing, and yeah, sure it is. You, why don't you look at the data? It's there in the article. Look, look at it. It's there. Okay. You know it is, and 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 actually, I will say this: there there is some some rather fascinating things. Um, I mean, look, they they might be expected to some of you sponsor designers and, and and physicists. Just because they're expected doesn't mean they're not fascinating. <laughs> okay, you can't take all the thunder away here. The, the, there are actually some fascinating things in the data that I thought were really cool personally, and you might not think they're cool, which is fine. I'm just I'm I'm messing with you, but I do have to say. This is some primo data analysis, if I do say so myself, and it is an excellent complement to the next article. Uh, it goes really well with the next topic. In my opinion, it's peanut butter and jelly, dude. Salt on a margarita glass or, uh, you know, other things that go together. You got this bolt gun test. Then you get the polonium-30 data on the Mark 18 and that's some huge pay dirt because you already had the regular six millimeter board polonium on the on the Mark 18. So now you're going from six millimeter to seven seven six two millimeter. Now you have a crazy case study. Open the bore with the exact same baffle geometry, bro. What happens? I'll tell you what happens. Let's move into topic three. That's right, topic three. At a time of fifty six minutes. And 37 seconds. Oh my God. You're 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 getting a physics lesson. You didn't even know it. It's amazing. Topic three. Sound signature review 6143. The Otter Creek Labs Polonium 30 again, this time on the standard 506 Mark 18. How does overbore influence the performance of this design? Oh my god, it's almost like a public combustion physics case study for you. And this is the banger. I think this is the banger. I think for some people seeing this article after the original Polonium Mark 18 article, I think a lot of things are going to click. A lot of things are going to click. You're taking a silencer design and opening the bore. No other change. Same weapon, same ammo, same mount type, same silencer, just made the hole bigger. This is huge. This is a huge test, dude. This test is going to show you a lot of different things. You're going to see design efficiency and inefficiency. You're going to see what elements change back pressure and how. You're going to understand more about alpha versus omega. You're going to understand more about shooter's ear risk and trade-offs with muzzle blast. You're going to see how so many past articles and studies we've published are consistent and once again prove correct again and again and again. Okay, Phenomenon is measured, demonstrated, explained, explored, cross-referenced, and bam, you have a case study in and of itself. And for Otter Creek, it's a performance validation they use for their customers, man. They prove with third-party independent laboratory data that the performance is doing what they say it's doing. And for, for all of you, you get that from them, which is important, but you also get tremendous research in understanding the science or physics. And it's one more piece of the puzzle for all of you. It really is. Now, is it a complicated piece? I can be. Is it bite-sized enough for you to gain uh, maybe a lot, you know a lot of knowledge here in an easily digestible way? Absolutely, absolutely, yes. Come on, let's go. Come on, man. Eat, drink, be merry. Please enjoy the articles, enjoy the research. Thank Otter Creek for being based, trusting Pew Science to perform this work again and again, coming through for you, for us, for themselves. I'm excited. Huge step forward for the entire state of practice. What? Oh, it's just a polonium with a bigger hole. Meh. Oh, yeah, yes, it is. It is. Do you understand what happens? We do. And now you will too. Okay? Awesome. We're doing this together. Uh, next week, we'll talk technical about it. Uh, this is just an introductory uh, discussion to wet your whistle. Uh, it's going to be great. Uh, we're going to get all up in the polonium 30 and the physics next week. Okay? Okay, cool. Stay tuned. Uh, stay safe out there. And I will talk with you folks again soon. Okay? All right, bye.